Welcome to this very special edition of Dan and Mac. We're here on the set of The Social Fix, and I thought I would pull Ethan O'Connor aside. He's a co-worker slash fucking Windows expert. I don't know about Windows <laughs> expert there, but I do know my fair share around Windows. So, he wanted to pull me aside today to talk about Skylake, which I am super excited for. Intel has been doing a whole lot of work on this new architecture and I'm super excited for it. So let me ask you off the bat right now, why the fuck is it taking so long to come out? You know, with such a big business as Intel, at this point they could do whatever the hell they want and people would buy their processors. Their SSDs, anything you want. It doesn't even matter. I can't really give you a definite answer as to <laughs> why. So you have why. no fucking clue? <laughs> I have no idea why. They can push it back and it doesn't even but matter. You, you maybe think it's because of Broadwell is why they're holding it back. Yeah, I mean, it's the only thing that I can think of that would make sense. Broadwell is an older architecture. They're doing a, a revamp of it to allow the new 14 nanometer uh, processor. But like, at the same time, the only way that they're gonna get to sell that is by pushing Skylake back. Because if they push Skylake back, people are going to buy that because it's the newest thing out there. You know there, there are those people out there that are going to buy it. They're going to buy that, then Skylake's going to come out in the third quarter. Exactly. Well, everybody wants to know what what is so special about Skylake? Why is it... What's better than Broadwell about it? Well, there's a couple different things, but the main two things that I'm super excited for are going to be... PCIe 4, which is going to double, no, quadruple the bandwidth of PCIe 1, which right now we're running PCIe 3. So times that by two, well, not necessarily two, but it's gonna add another one onto that, which is gonna be awesome, because then all of your graphics cards that you're running, you can get tons of bandwidth. All your PCIe extension cards, all your RAID cards, everything else that you could possibly plug into your PCIe is gonna be more bandwidth which is great. Another thing that's gonna be positive about this is the fact that you're gonna be able to switch between DDR3 and DDR4. DDR4 is super expensive, just like DDR3 when it came out, but at the same time, for those people that just wanna upgrade their processor, get that little bit of extra performance out of their system, well, they can do that. You can just switch out the processor. So going from DDR3 to DDR4, how much of a jump in speed is that? Is it pretty big or is it? Um, it's At this point, it's pretty minimal. I mean, honestly, I think the maximum for DDR3 right now is 3100 megahertz, and the maximum for DDR4 is, I think, 34. But we're looking at overclockability for DDR4 being close to 4000 megahertz and above, which is pretty intense speed. I'm super excited about that. I'm currently gonna be building a new system using the X99 chipset and I'm gonna be using DDR4 now. Skylake, right? You're waiting for that? I am not waiting for not, Skylake. You're gonna do Broadwell? X99 is gonna be the Haswell E, which, oh, is Haswell. Little, which is gonna be a little bit older architecture, but then again, 2016, you're gonna coming at, be coming out with the uh, Broadwell E. So, what is, what is the re supposed to be the release date for Skylake? For so Skylake? We're still waiting for next year? What the no, no. It's gonna be coming out in quarter three of 2015. At least that's the official announcement. As of exact date, unknown. So you say quarter three for Skylake, is this gonna be quad core only? Or what are we talking about, laptops? Or, cause there's those U-chips, what is this? I guess I'm not too familiar with uh, what the logic board is or whatever that, because there's U and then there's M or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, what um, are we looking gonna... at for like a laptop? There's gonna be it. mobile chips for it, but for the most part, it's gonna be a mainstream processor. So four cores, we're looking at between, I believe, 3.1 gigahertz, all the way up to 4.2 with boost for their entire lineup. And that's, I believe, like seven chips, but that's just for the desktop. As for mobile, I believe they're gonna be coming out with a couple mobile ones, but I think the main focus is going to be there. Uh, desktop processors. And those will be released quarter three. Quarter three. That's what okay. they're looking for. Because most of the stuff that I look into is going to be their enthusiast grade, their like performance high end. So I'm only looking for 
when Skylight comes out, I might build a system just to test it out. Well, talking about having on this show, Dan and Mac, I was curious about when Apple's gonna adopt that, and they didn't adopt, adopt it during this new revamp of the 13 inch, which they did the fifth gen Broadwell, they did do that with the 13 inch, but they didn't do it with the 15 inch, which would be the quad core, which I'm wondering if they're gonna release Skylake with that in uh, June here at WWDC, or if it's gonna be much later. Because what is quarter three? What time frame is that? Is that August? Yeah, I believe so. I think it's after July. Okay, so late July. August and WWDC is going to be beginning of June, so if any, maybe they'll announce it and then say it'll be released later. Yeah, if anything, they'll announce it then if they have it ready, which most of the time they have everything ready got, a year in advance. Yeah, testing it and stuff before. Yeah, so you probably should see things coming up before it actually releases. All right, one other question here: What's your take on the Apple Watch? The Apple Watch. You know, I'm not a big Apple guy, but like the only issue I have, because I've used the Microsoft like wristband or whatever, and it's it's pretty pretty what, awesome. What did you use it for? Uh, heart monitor, workouts, that type of thing. Uh, switching between different time zones and whatnot. Like that, it's nice to have that notification there. So like not being an Apple user, I could see where the Apple Watch would be awesome because I've had, you know, the iPod Nano, I've had like the the little form factors, whatnot, they're awesome. The only issue I see with that Apple Watch is the huge price range difference. I have no idea why anyone would buy, you know, plus a thousand dollar Apple Watch. That just seems ridiculous to me. But at the same time, there are those people out there that want that gold plated. So. Yeah, I've been looking at it myself and it's like, well, I feel like this generate the first generation is not quite there yet. I think second gen, third gen is when we're gonna start seeing the breakthroughs. Like slimmer, more like you can actually see when people are using it, there's a little bit of leg and it hangs up a little bit. It's not real that right. smooth. So future versions probably be better. So Well that's the thing. I mean technology is in an exponential curve. At this point, it's gonna just gonna get better and better. So at this point, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, well, this has been a quick discussion with Ethan O'Connor, I'm Dana Mack. I thank you guys for joining me this week. And like I said, we're on the set of the social fix, so watch these guys. Pretty great discussion that they had the other day. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next time.